evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Welcome to London. I'm Jeff Cox and this is Jeff Talk. He's an internationally celebrated, award-winning couture designer who has dressed royalty, celebrities and glitterati and his work has been seen at the most prestigious events. From humble beginnings to the bright lights of London and a successful fashion label, in 2008 he was the first Pakistani to showcase at London Fashion Week and has since produced 15 collections and been published across the globe. His Wikipedia entry credits him with having reintroduced fusion to the fashion scene and is he possibly one of the most eligible bachelors in London? Please welcome Omar Mansour. Omar Mansour, welcome to Jeff York. Hello, how are you, sir? Thank you very much. Very good. Ramadan Mabarak. Oh, thank you. You can, Mubarak. Lockdown. How have you been uh, getting on? What have you been up to? It's a tough time for everyone, isn't it? It is indeed. It's more of an interesting time as compared to tough times, we should say. And uh, I'm actually enjoying the change in the lifestyle, which was never predicted before. And uh, any bad habits you've picked up since you've been off? Uh, three and a half kilos of weight. <laughs> oh dear. Yes, we, we, I think we've all done that. <laughs> True. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's talk about when you first arrived here in the UK um, mm -hmm. as a bright-eyed young boy uh, with uh, big ideas of wanting to get into the fashion industry. What was the, uh, the toughest part of that transition? I think the toughest part of the transition was will I be able to make it with my signature style? Because I was not much confident about the signature style of embroidering and embellishing the garments to that level will actually be uh, uh, accepted by the market and appreciated by the client. And uh, what about the actual transition personally from Pakistan to London life? Oh yeah, obviously, um, I think it was sort of this one thing, I mean, starting from how to wash your own clothes and how to buy the washing powder from the supermarket and there's bio, non, bio color, non color, this kind of <laughs> variety. <laughs> So something which I still don't do is to make my own food, to buy your own food. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have to go through a lot of learning actually. It was a very good learning process for me, understanding how to get along uh, with different cultures, people from different ethnic backgrounds. So there was a lot of learning in that case. And uh, did you have family here or connections already? No, not at all. I think I'm the only Pakistani who doesn't have any connections here in London. <laughs> and was that something that uh, inspired you and motivated you to want to go into the, uh, a career that involved textiles or manufacture, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Yeah, uh, when my father came into the world and my grandfather switched from the rugs business to the textile business, and he started selling fabric and clothes because he moved to the Manchester, the city of uh, sister city of Manchester, uh, sorry, twin city of Manchester, Faisalabad. So that's the textile town of Pakistan. And in that era, Manchester was a textile town of Britain. So that's what they were titled as twin cities. Uh, so yeah, my grandfather came into textiles. So my father came into spinning. He was making thread and all my uncles and relatives are into textiles, living in a textile town. So yeah. for me, it yeah. was a hobby and it's something which I used to go to. Visiting a textile mill after my school time was something, even my school trips, uh, the uh, what you call recreational trips, you used to go to the bigger textile groups and mills and we used to just see how the thread is made, how the cotton is picked up in the fields and how fabric is developed and then how it's printed and how it's converted to garment and when it's exported to the West and other countries. So, And was there any particular moment that you remember or you recall where you suddenly thought, this is what I want to do? As, a, as young as I go to class, eight years old, I think, uh, I remember that 
I knew that I would be definitely making prints for textiles because I was really good into my arts in those days in my school and not in not very good into other subjects. So whenever my headmistress used to tell me that why don't you study and work equally in the other subjects also? So I said, no, because I'm not getting anything out of them. I have to proceed my career into arts. And she was like, okay, fine. And what arts? I said, well, a textile mill is there in the family and I can work as a textile designer. So that was the whole concept. So you went to the London College of Fashion, if I'm correct, and you, you studied there and graduated. When researching your work, um, I don't think I've ever seen so many magazine covers and articles attributed to one designer. So obviously your, your trail of success has been big. What were your feelings that, that first time you were published or that you did a, a large event? Oh my God, I think it was a surreal kind of concept. And it keeps, keeps on coming back repeatedly over the years also, because as soon as, uh, I mean, as many times as the events getting bigger and bigger. So when I did my very first London Fashion Week, I was like, okay, I'm ready to get retired. I have achieved the self-actualization stage of my life. So <laughs> that's done. And I've been featured on the biggest news channel, which I wanted to be. So I think I have achieved whatever I thought in my life. But that was the very first step. And then I was asked by my elders, okay, what next? And then, yeah, it, there comes the Vogue and then comes the BBC and all those uh, media and press. So then I realized, okay, there are more galaxies ahead of this galaxy also, which we see every night. So <laughs> it's a and, and, and these years down the line, when I, when I did the introduction, I, I mentioned how many collections you'd had, um, that uh, whether you were possibly one of the most eligible bachelors in London at the moment having the single life as you do and because uh, I noticed in a magazine article that you once scored very highly as hottie of the week in a, in a <laughs> press article that I saw. How do you feel about that? That must have been quite flattering. Uh, well it was in way back in I think 2013 or 14 somewhere. Uh, it was flattering. <laughs> <It wasn't there. laughs> and um, plans for the future then personally and professionally and, and what are your collection inspirations? Because I imagine they must change and develop season to season. Yes, they actually do. I do, I do uh, work on the trend forecasting a lot. So the first formula is 30-70. So 30% has to be creative, signature style, my style. The 70% has to be commercial. So this is how the collection is being uh, designed, roughly. And then we do trend forecasting, the color forecasting, and then comes my muse, which is usually a British muse uh, from the British history, or modern history of uh, Europe. So I merge the muse with my signature style, with the trend forecasting and the 3070 formula, and here comes out of, we churn out a collection out of that. So the whole idea is not just to people see and appreciate the collection, but actually to wear and enjoy repeatedly wearing the collection. So that's the whole concept. Okay, Omar, it's time to play our brand new quickfire game, which everybody is playing, all of our guests. It's called I Can't Believe I Said That. 40 seconds to answer as many of these multiple choice questions as you can. The stop, top score so far is 10 by Lizzie Elliott. So, uh, are you okay? Are you ready? Shall we start? I'm ready, Let sir. I hope. <laughs> yes, I hope you did it. Let's go. City or countryside? Countryside. Coffee or tea? Tea. Cake or dessert? Cake. Mansion or penthouse? Penthouse. The last thing that you were late for? A meeting with a client. Housework you hate doing? Cleaning the floor. What was your best subject at school? Uh, arts. Describe your dance style in one word. Freestyle. <laughs> Night out or early riser? Night out. Oh, that's, that's the end of it. So let's have a look. Nine. You scored nine. Oh. So it was very close. So you've come pretty <laughs> close. I'd say that was quite good. I'd, I'd be quite impressed with that. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, as, as always. Um, what advice... 
would you give to a young struggling designer who maybe wants to step into your shoes one day where you are now? First of all, do understand that after this post pandemic uh, era, which we will soon enter, uh, norms will be changed. So there will be new norms, which you guys will be uh, defining and come towards the sustainability of fashion. I mean, pre this pandemic, we were discussing who is fashion conscious, but now we'll be discussing conscious fashion. So people will be going for where it's coming from, how sustainable it is. People won't be talking much about or uh, this fast fashion, disposable fashion. I mean, uh, we are producing 1.4 billion uh, garments a year on the world for six, seven billion people. So the fast fashion trend will be definitely changing. So look for the product which is so sustainable, uh, which is ethically produced, and which is uh, a classy project, uh, product in which people can invest with a long-term uh, vision. Omar Mansur, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. That was Omar Mansur. I'm Jeff Cox. Join me next time for Jeff Talk.